Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from MechTech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at a new model from a company we've taken a look at their keyboards from before. Um, a company that I've worked with in the past few times. They've uh, participated in our budget keys giveaways and uh, they're nice folks over there. And this is a collaboration between Royal Axe and ProtoArc. So this is a collaboration product. This is not their first collaboration. They have another series, but this one's a new one from ProtoArc and Royal Axe. So today we're taking a look at the ProtoArc Royal Axe L98. This is a, uh, looks like an 1800 because there's some space there, but we have an LED screen, which is the rage right about now, huh? So. This one is preloaded, I believe, with yellows. And I don't remember too much about this because I try not to take oh, too much of a look at the pages for a keyboard until I have it in hand. Um, I don't want to have any preconceived notions of it, or as much as possible. I am human. But we have an LCD color display. Um, it displays accurate date, time, mode switching, lighting effects switching, power display, light speed, brightness adjustment, and other parameter settings. So, doesn't sound like it's customizable, but we will find out. Multi-device, full hot swap shafts or switches, and symphony lighting effect. So it has that audio effect if you guys like that. So, this is a very hefty box. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what we have. So, First off, I'd like to say I like this packaging. It's very well done. I remember with their other one, the uh, Y68, I believe it was. I also thought it was very nicely packed. Um, we've got a user guide that's nice, big, and bright. X product manager, um, software developer. One of the biggest things is onboarding people because, I mean, no matter how well you design something, there's always going to be people that are going to ask questions. So it's better to just assume that act like this is the first time this person's ever used this and give them nice big easy things and i gotta say i love this it has different options for win seven and below win eight and above um, how to connect to bluetooth how to connect to the 2.4 looks like it has a pocket for it and how to connect to usb as well as the on and off switch the way this case is displayed when you open it up it's really nice i mean you see right here, all right, let's see, we've got the switches, a nice little padded little EVA pocket, and we are dealing with, like I said, the yellows, and are these? Yep, they are Gatoron. And I think that they're the pros, but I'm not sure, because there's no ping, and they have that cloudy type of housing. So I think these are the KS9 or the Pros, but I don't have to double check on that. Now, one thing that I, I haven't seen anybody else do this, but if you look right here, it shows, what do I have here? I have my cable, a USB cable. What do I have over here? I have a couple of extra keys. I have a, a key switch puller and a key cap puller. So let's go ahead and take a look. Oh, they're in there tightly want to mess anything up I like how this looks so I'm gonna be gentle watch me break stuff <laughs> yeah, that's when I start breaking stuff when I try to be gentle Whew. maybe I can do this now yeah much easier all right uh, set this aside now this is a nice addition I did not know that it came with An aviator cable <laughs> I mean come on now don't get me wrong I'm not the craziest about aviator cables but I do like them um, especially in certain situations I think they they add a nice bit of finesse but not too many keyboards come with these right off the bat uh, this is a nice clean one I've seen some that have a very let's say sloppy and 
to these where these connect, but these look very nice. This is the standard, um, is this the 16, I think? Yeah, the four pin one. I actually have a whole bunch of connectors. I was going to make a whole bunch of these. I made one, no, I made two. And I stopped making them. <laughs> but I have a whole bunch of these parts and USB ends, USB C ends, and everything. So we have a very nice coiled rubberized aviator cable that comes stock in the box. So we're starting off on a good foot already. All right. Now let's see in this box. Oh, we actually got a little tray. We have extra keys in case we want to change out the colors. We have a different set of arrows and a different space bar. Then we have your standard key cap puller and switch puller. I'll be honest, I prefer them in one. I don't want to have to go search for two different tools, but it's nice of them to do this. They got the extra switches. They got the extra keys. They're checking off all of my wants when it comes to these so present presentation wise i've got to say this is probably one of the better ones um that i've encountered i mean this box is very nicely laid out you have you don't need the scripts you got pictures of what you got um and you can store the stuff in here you're going to know where it's going to be now all right and this is some very dense foam so you know this is going to be protected. We have a nice, this is a quite thick user's manual. Huh. Oh. Wait up. It does look like we can upload animations to the keyboard. Well, well, well. That just changes things, doesn't it? <laughs> I feel like Christmas Day. Alright, so we have a nice, it's a medium grade, but it's a de definitely decent enough, and I like the edges of it um dust cover i think all keyboards should come with dust covers but that's just my opinion and this is definitely protected this case the the box that it comes in i mean it's gonna take some shipping and some banging around and it still should arrive fine i'm an odd bird because i've worked in industries before if i see a box that just kind of is like an afterthought it makes me think that corners were cut during the design of the actual product. I know that's not always the case, but usually if there's, you know, issues with time, money, everything like that, packaging is one of the last things that gets attention. So if you've already run out of time or run out of money or dipped into your budget, it's going to be seen. They didn't skimp out on anything when it comes to packaging here. We even have a very nice bag. Yes, we cannot use this for a PE foam mod, but it's quite thick. I forgot what this plastic is called, but it's quite thick. But here we are with... Oh my goodness, this is a lovely, lovely design. I've got to say, I am loving the lines of this keyboard. Got a little bit of a metallic plate here with a yep magnetic slot for your USB um, receiver. We've got the on and off switch. There's the port, and yep, we def. Oh, that's that's a pretty good gasket mount. I gotta say, I'm I'm really enjoying the design of this keyboard. You got this metal plate here. We actually have a very slim profile. Um, Does sound like there's a little bit of room in there. I like these uh, like grips. It reminds me. I mean, obviously the colors help, but it reminds me of anime. I know it's not. It's more of a bento colorway, I think, but it gives me a almost a futuristic vibe. Oh, is that a light? You have slain an enemy. That looks like a race flag. I, I, I like this design. It's different, but it's cool. Oh, there's some pretty nice size flip-up legs. Oh, and they got almost like a geared system. Or the, These aren't going to flip and fall. These are nice feet. I don't usually notice differences in feet because usually they're 
very similar, but these are the tolerances are nice and they're not going to go anywhere. And I mean, that's a nice touch that they even have Royal Axe on each of the feet. And then we've got a little badge. Yeah, it does have a plastic protective layer. Oh, and it even says Gatoron G Pro Yellow. I don't know why the the case though. Let's see. It does have a bit of flex, not that much, but it is a longer keyboard. But I that I don't know if I'm showing that, but See how much I can press that bottom case in? I don't think that I should be able to do that. Well, we'll see when we get in there, but it definitely has flex. This is one of the uh, more gaskety kits that I've seen um, from an in-stock board as of yet. All right, let's see what these lights look like. Go ahead and turn it on. We have a boot logo of the Royal Axe there linking all right so it's trying to pair oh yeah look at that front light that's definitely giving me that kit vibe oh please tell me one of the effects is a red light going back and forth i will uh i will cry with happiness i'm not going to go that far but that would be cool so this has a nice hefty user manual i'd rather them have more information than less it's not like yeah, you know, I can't store this in the box and go look it up when I need it, but all right. What they scream back in this. I wanna see about the light switching on the front. If it's still trying to link. Okay, I gotta first I gotta figure out how to go into wired mode. Wired mode. Oh, here we go. Switch on the side. All right, so that's wired, man. All right, so turning it on is an. Uh, where's it gonna be off? All right, so I've got a light for charging, but. All right, so now uh, that was odd. All right, so we see that we have the time and date. It's actually. It's actually close to being right. I'm not sure what the little keyboard stands for, but it tells us that we're in win mode. I do not like how fast that animation is. It should be much slower. That's going to be distracting to my eyes. But I know that we can switch in and out of that. I'm just trying to see. There's a whole bunch of sub-legends on the side of the keycap, but... Oh, that's... Maybe that's it. Yeah, that's it. All right. <laughs> All right, it may not be kit, but that is pretty cool. Well, can I get that in red? Can I change the color of the side light? Okay, that little, it looks like a keyboard uh, console controller. It just means that it's in wired mode. All right, well, that's as close as I can to it. It's a light that craw crawls across. I really, I really like that effect. That is really well done. And then this turns the LED screen on or off. Looks like it has to boot up each time, but... All right, so it is... I mean, just as it is, it is quite low. Um, I, I know I wouldn't be able to type at this angle. I mean, my wrist just hurt just from laying my hands on here. Not hurt, but like, like I'm pulling on them. So usually you would like the default typing angle to be at, at, at least five, if not six or seven degrees. So yeah, pretty low typing angle, but thankfully we've got flip out feet. That will 
put us in a much better position. I really love that front light sliding across. <laughs> I know it's silly, but... So we got the lights that shine through pretty good here. Um, go ahead. Put it over here where it won't matter. And let's take... Let's see what we've got here. First things first, we have a PC plate. Yes. Thank you. PC plates are very nice. We do not have a IPXE sheet, so it's just the PCB, but we do have a nice thick dampener between the plate and the PCB. And oh, it feels like a silicone rubber damper below the PCB. So we are well dampened and as we saw in the box we have gator on yellows and no no ping so yeah i'm pretty sure these are the gap pros if i'm not mistaken let's check out these stabilizers These are very well attached to the PC plane. Very nice. Very nice. And no, it does not appear like we have any screw holes for PCB stabilizer mounting. So, no biggie. Thankfully, these uh, stabilizers are quite well done. Nothing to clip. They are lubricated at both the, on the wire as well as inside of the stem so they are nicely lubricated all right the keys for the most part sound really nice but then this side sounds really nice this side does not and yeah, I got ticking on this stabilizer Oh, this is a new one on me. It's got like a rubber gasket. That is huh, actually kind of cool. But I'm wondering if this is actually what's causing. They're definitely lubricated. Perhaps too much, but I'm not going to take the time to clean them. We're going to work with stock right now, but this is the side that seems to be messing up. Oh, yeah, the wire looks a little bowed. That's more than likely the case. We got a, a bowed wire. So when I come back to this, I'll probably either replace the stabilizer or just place, replace the wire altogether. Well, that kind of sucks, but yeah, it's not the end of it. It really could be the... I mean, part... It appears that the wire is not perfectly straight. It looked like it had a little bit of a bow, but it could also be a little over lubricated. I got a little of the same there. All right, so tuning stabilizers is usually one of those things. I was gonna say it's sounding like one of the better out of the out of the box keyboards, and don't get me wrong, it does sound nice. It's very I would say stock, it almost leans into almost a creamy, maybe maybe a muted clacky, but almost creamy, but that kind of takes me out of it right there. If it sounded like this, that'd be better, but yeah, that's, uh, that's a shame. Anyway, the rest of the stabilizers do sound just fine and the keyboard like I said it has a has that yellow that Gatoron yellow 
sound but because we have the pc plate it's nice and soft i think if we did the tempest tape mod and added switch pads we'd be looking at a or we'd be listening to a much livelier creamier poppier sound and i will be coming back to that to this to do that because this is honestly i'm i love the looks of this keyboard i am um, I mean, I know it's using the bento way or the bento color scheme, which are colors that I don't mind. I mean, the orange, red, light blue, anything blue I like. But I love the big legends. I'm a big fan for big legends. That's one thing I didn't check. What are we looking at? Um, we do have double shot keycaps. It's another plus, and they do feel like PBT. So, what thickness are they? I'm going to guess 1.2. Oh. Woo! 1.4. All right. Make sure. So, they're 1.4 millimeter thickness body, which is a very nice size. So, that's um obviously adding to it. And it looks like... Oh, wow. No, I guess that is an OEM profile. Hmm. This is a, a very nice looking keyboard. And minus, I mean, honestly, I believe five minutes with a stabilizer would take care of it. But we're just going to stick with it stock. Again, I'm going to come back. This one I think I can bring a lot of life to. So I definitely want to come back to it. Mod it, but keep the keycaps and the switches. Because I think the keycaps and the switches are perfectly fine for this and they match. There's no need to replace them. Um, the switches have no ping and they sound great. Um, I, I really think I can achieve very creamy, some that kind of creamy tone that you only hear on some of the more expensive aluminum boards. I think I can reach that on here. Just the specs. Today we took a look at the Royal Axe ProtoArc L98 in navy white. It is also available in a pebble white colorway. This is a three mode 1800 Bluetooth BLE and 2.4 gigahertz compatible keyboard. It comes with a programmable TFT LCD screen that also includes information about connectivity and battery percentage. It has a north facing LED PCB with both 3 and 5 pin hot swap compatibility. It is preloaded with OEM double shot PBT bento colorway keycaps, as well as includes some extras. It also includes Gaineron G Pro yellow switches and includes a few extra in the box. This keyboard comes with a polycarbonate plate. It manufacture retails for $99.99, weighs in at 1,008 grams, and is loaded with a 6,000 milliamp hour battery. The chin of this keyboard sits at just 18 millimeters above the typing surface while the back sits at 27, providing for a default typing angle of 5 degrees. Raising the first set of flip out feet will take the back up to 36 millimeters, changing the angle of typing to 9 degrees. Using the final set of flip out feet will give you a height of 46 millimeters and a typing angle of 14 degrees. All right, so today we took a look at the ProtoArc Cross. I don't know how to say that right. It's a, it's a collaboration between ProtoArc and Royal Axe. But Royal Axe is listed first. So, but I think they're both involved. Anyway, this is the second keyboard that I've taken a look at from this collaboration. The first one I liked, except for one thing that they had with the um, layout. It just kind of, they had a little block where the backspace key should be. Though I did test the 68 percent and their 1800 had it in a different spot so i don't think i would have had the same issue but this one is a world above that one i mean this one from the pc plate to the yellow uh, the gatoron yellow pros g pros from the pc plate to the gatoron g pro yellows to these double shot keycaps to the programmable screen um to the the design to the front 
LED display, which I just love, um, to the low front. Not a lot of keyboards have. I mean, most keyboards start at 21, 22 millimeter chin and go up from there. This one's 18 millimeter. And I know for a lot of people, they prefer that because they have thinner wrist rest or however they have their desk set up, they prefer a lower um, chin. Um, we have your standard 1800 layout and you're not really missing much because the space is used quite well. Um, I mean, they haven't separated out the function keys and I think that's how they got that space because normally you'd have escape a 1U space or maybe a 0.75U space. I don't know exactly how, much, how big the, the spaces between are, but usually you'd have the escape, a space, the F1 through F4 cluster, a space, F5 through F8 space, F9 through F12, and maybe you'd have the F13 key. But they've very ingeniously, because at first it took me a second to be like, wait a minute, how did they get that extra space? I didn't realize, it's so well designed that I didn't realize that they had basically scrunched that up. Um, most of the time, that's done on like 60 or 75 percent keyboards um, where they scrunch that up so it just kind of it stood out to me anyway going from the y6 y68 i believe that's the one that i took a look at before which it was an okay keyboard don't get me wrong but this is a world of difference and i mean it hasn't even been a year if my timing is right since that other one was released it's probably less than a year but they have obviously listened to feedback and taken from the community and they're looking to see what is popular what is not and they've delivered a keyboard that i i, I like this a lot like i just took a look at another 1800 i've been using a lot of 1800s lately i just I don't know. I, I was a TKL guy for the longest time with a numpad. But when I have the numpad attached, I get just the same amount of space, if not a little bit more for my mouse. And it just works for me. Although there are times that I do like to put the numpad on the other side of my mouse. So the mouse is in, in between the keyboard and the numpad. But no big deal. I like this keyboard and I, I'm going to have to now start making scheduling slots for daily drivers because i want to daily drive this but there's another one that i recently reviewed that i want to daily test drive as well the point is in stock keyboards are becoming much better we're having a much better selection the prices are staying the same or coming down but the feature sets are going up <clears throat> we're seeing features in in stock keyboards that we did not see in ever it was only on you know more expensive and different buying model keyboards. Um, I, I know that Skyloom is releasing a QMK keyboard. So as I stated, if you guys have been watching my channel for a while, I said 2023 is going to be a year of some significant change in this market. And I think that that has borne out. I don't think I'm a... I, I'm in no way able to pre predict the future um, if i could i would have won the powerball i'm just taking a look at hints in the market and taking guesses or uh, making educated guesses and i and i mean i just knew that this year we were going to see a lot of these companies ramp up and deliver stuff one of the next things we're going to see probably not till next year or late this year are going to be in stock keyboards with optional layouts. Now I know we have a lot of Skyloom boards that have the split space bar. That's been a thing for quite a while, but I think we're going to have options now to see, you know, step caps locks, st split backspace, split space bar, um, split left shift. I think we're going to get a lot more of those options. And I think we're going to get a lot more keyboards that give us the option to say, I want to go ISO. No, I want to go ANSI. So I don't think it's going to be every keyboard, but I think there's going to be a few in-stock keyboards that will offer those features. Anyway, <clears throat> this keyboard honestly sounds really good, except for that spacebar stabilizer. Mm. Uh, and I want to fix it, but I'm going to give you guys what I always do, a stock sound test, the way it was out of the box. But 
I will be coming back to this keyboard and I will be modding it as I am very confident that I can finesse a creamy sound profile out of here using the same switches and keycaps, just modifying the interior. I believe that there's enough room in there that I can do a couple of things that will guarantee I will get some creaminess out of this. Um, I will be also doing a more in-depth into the uh, customization of the software. Uh, my Windows machine is currently <laughs> down. Surprise! Um, and so I'm waiting for a part to come in so that I can get that back up and running. Uh, and, and I will do coverage on the screen, but I'm going to come back. I'm definitely going to mod this keyboard. I love the keycaps. This is one of the first, uh, it was one of the few keyboards that I'm like, yep, just the way it is. Switches and keycaps. Just keep it like that. Well, am I going to make some changes? Yes, I'm going to definitely. I'm pretty sure I can get that stabilizer working. I mean, I may have to replace the wire, but I doubt it. I have these two 3D printed little tools that allow me to grab each end of the wire, and it makes it pretty easy um, to line up the, the stabilizer parts. Unless it's just completely warped out of, out of shape, I think I'll be able to get it. But that's when I come back to this. Right now, uh, the Bluetooth, I did connect up to Bluetooth, and it was basically instant um i i do have bluetooth low energy um on here my windows machine has regular bluetooth uh so i was hoping to test with that but it's down so i don't know but my linux machine it connected right away so i don't see it having any issues with connecting um with windows machines with a different bluetooth level now you already still have the 2.4 though as an option i do I actually like that it's right there so you can see it you can grab it you don't have to flip the keyboard over or you know dig around for it it's right there and it's visible I keep this here because I will uh, once I come back to this I'm gonna cut out a screen of uh, film protector for a cell phone camera for I like to cut out the films from screen uh, screen protectors for smartphones and then i'll put that there so that's why i don't want to take it off now because i don't want to get it scratched so i want to protect it because this is really nice i'm i i really like this i love the design i thought when i first saw it i was like do these slide up and down there is a switch over on this side but i just it's very very slim not a low profile just a slim profile oops that was my bad. If you do it at an angle, it's going to... Oh, never mind. I just guess it was just the way I was holding it. Um, it has a slim profile. It has a very... has a slim profile, but it has some very cool design elements. The sides, uh, that front LED. I mean, that's just... I want. I got to figure out if I can get that just red because then it's going to be my kit keyboard. But then I'm going to want to make it black because <laughs> I, I so just I want to call this the Knight Rider keyboard because of that front LED. I, I, I like it. I mean, RGB isn't everything, but I like it. You know, if you're going to do it and you do it right, <laughs> it's enjoyable. I mean, it's all about a lot of this is about aesthetics, and I mean, some keyboards make me happy. This one is making me happy. I like it. <laughs> I really do. It's um, it's one of those few keyboards that comes along and it's just like, yay! It it touches that happy spot inside. So, um, for right now though, like I said, I, I wish I could get into the software, but Windows. I, I'm a Linux guy. I prefer Linux. I've been using Linux now over 15 years as my primary OS. I will be coming back to this when I mod it. I may just do a separate video just for the software once I get my Windows machine back up and running. But today, I'm going to leave you guys with a stock sound test. Kind of just try not to... Don't beat me up about the space bar. I will fix it, but I'm doing this stock out of the box. But that's really... That's the only complaint, and that's something that I can fix. Otherwise, um, I just... I have a thing for this keyboard. I really do. Like, I don't usually go like, ah, all giddy over keyboards, but I like this. I like it. It's nice. Anyway, what do you guys think of it? I mean, I know, like I said, this a lot of this is about preference, and it's very subjective. But 
what do you guys think of the feature set? I mean, this is a under $100 keyboard. Comes with a PC plate. Comes with Gateron G Pros. Comes with a decent set of keycaps with a few extras as well as a few extra switches. Comes with a programmable TFT. Not an OLED, but a TFT LCD screen. Um, it's wireless, 6,000 milliamp hour battery. Uh, it, it, it's pretty good. In my book, this is a pretty good keyboard, and it's a significant upgrade from the last keyboard I took a look at from ProtoArc, Royal, Royal Axe ProtoArc. Um, so I've got to give them props to their design team. You guys have done a great job, and I'm going to come back and improve on that. So again, this is a great upgrade from the last proto arc that I took a look at. I want to send my props out to the design team over there because you guys are, are definitely improving. Um, once I mod this keyboard, I, I'll shoot you guys a link. So maybe you guys can even, I mean, will we see an in-stop keyboard with a Tempest tape mod already applied? Who knows? Anyway, I'm going to leave you guys with a stock sound test of this Royal Axe. Proto Arc collaboration. Um, I'd love to know what you guys think about the keyboard and the sound test. And if you guys got any specific ideas for the mods when I come back to it, uh, please put them down in the comments below. And until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.